Welcome to a new video in my home automation series and today it's uh, NS Panel Pro time again because there is a new firmware version in which uh, quite a few new features have been added and a lot of uh, smaller things got fixed so I think there is definitely um, it's a good idea to release a new video because these are meaningful changes and I think you should also look at them and, and uh, hopefully upgrade the NS Panel Pro or make use of these new features. If I quickly want to run through these, and I'm just going to go through this, is what we got some new screens. We have these devices screen, and we also have the uh, scenes screen. And now you can have multiple of these screens. So if you have too many scenes, too many devices, now you can just uh, organize them into multiple screens. So instead of swiping from up to up down, now you have to swipe left to right because you have multiple screens or you could do multiple screens. So up to three of devices and three of scenes. There is a new screen edit which is called the web pages. And here you can again create these cards or and then these are basically links. And at the moment I just edit some news, uh, you know, YouTube uh, news channels. Uh, you know live news channels which have a fixed uh, URL so I can just always add them and it takes a little bit of time for this stream to load but it is working so I think this is good and uh, Sonofo for selling this uh, feature uh, as a feature where you can you know watch the uh, football World Cup in the in your NS Panel Pro well I watch news so that's one thing other small changes uh, here on the main screen you can change you can see that the icons have changed and the pop-up screen has changed a little bit but um, uh, these became a little bit smaller so I don't know maybe the bigger one was uh, didn't look that good but it was easier to press some other small changes you can click on the weather and you get a fed, uh, seven day weather forecast I think this is nice and also the uh, consumption screen got fixed so now you can see that it shows the consumption quite nicely. And the last feature which I won't be able to demo you is uh, they have added NS Panel to NS Panel voice call, which obviously I can't show because I have only one NS Panel. But in the previous video, I show how you can call from your phone the NS Panel Pro. Now you can do between devices if you have multiple devices in the same account. So it has to be in the same account. So that's in a nutshell. So let's look at the different things. So first of all is the web pages that I've shown you again. Um, I mentioned that um, the first immediate use for this for me was, uh, um, you know, YouTube channels or any other online TV channels. Uh, but basically you can just link any web pages here. And if I bring up the editor and if I go back to the main screen, now you have a new uh, button here which says web pages. And basically, as you can see, you can create a name which shows up as larger letters on the tile and then you can just have the, the URL. And if you want to link a, a YouTube video, what you can do is uh, you can see the example here. So you see, uh, you type https www.youtube.com slash embed slash and the um, ID of the uh, of the YouTube video, which I mean, if you look at any YouTube video, you can see the ID. Usually in the URL, you can see like watch equals, and then there is this uh, ID, and uh, and that's it. And that is going to load the the YouTube that YouTube video in full screen. So I am going to see the you know like dislike buttons and some of the other things. So it is clearer on the screen. And according to YouTube, there is also a feature that you if uh, at the end of the URL you add question mark and autoplay equals one it should play it automatically and i've tested it in a browser and it definitely works but for some reason it doesn't work on the ns panel so um, what i have shown you before as well uh, by the way how many well i can't really see how many you can have but again if you have probably more than four then you can just scroll up and down and of course you can also you know move them around if you want to rearrange them but the way it works with youtube i haven't re i mean i tested with a generic web page but i don't think it makes a lot of sense because everything is so so tiny i mean it's basically like a 
you know, a four inch browser. So you need probably some special web pages that would be useful. I mean, maybe you have some homebrew home automation system, which is not son of, but now if it has a very simple user interface or web interface, you can just call it up and then uh, control it from there. But that's the only other idea that I had in mind. So if you have any good uses for these web pages, just let me know in the comment section. So as I show you before, the way it works is that uh, it takes a couple of seconds for this initial vid initial screen to load. As you can see, there are no, you know, no comments or nothing. And then you have to click on play once and it just loads the UI with the play button and also the other YouTube buttons. But then you have to play, press play here as well. And I think the audio is good. And of course you have, you know, the controls here and uh, like I post the video and the navigation comes up. So as I said, it's a fully, you know, working browser um, and it just works. The only criticism I have, um, well, this usability thing is what I mentioned in the previous video is that previously the proximity sensor, which is up here, you can probably see it blink. Yeah, you can see it blinking. It comes up on the recording. The way the proximity sensor used to work or the sensitivity way it was that I have this on my desk. So if I was sitting at my desk, this uh, screen would never go off because it was detecting me that I was in front of the screen. But now it does. So even if your YouTube is playing, the screen is going to go blank after some time. And then if you just click or if you touch the screen, then, you know, it, it comes back. The audio stays on. Uh, so it keeps playing the audio, but then, then the screen goes black. And I, what I learned is the best is to touch the screen up here where you have the, you know, like it says Sky News. Uh, otherwise, if you type, type, uh, type it anywhere else, you either stop the video or, you know, sometimes that YouTube pop-up comes up and it's just hard to get rid of. So again, just, you know, a touch on the top of the screen. But it works and the speaker is pretty good. So I have, I mean, I was just testing Sky News and the NASA, NASA TV. And for example, the NASA TV comes really, really loud. So it, it is actually too loud. And, um, you know, you don't have the volume buttons here. So if you want to fine tune the volume button, then you have to go out and... NATO altimeter is what Sandra um, Salma referring earlier. That just look and uh, collect measurement. So you have to go into the settings, uh, modify the volume, come back here, load the stream again, and then just probably have a couple of iterations until it, it, it is good. So these are the web pages. Interesting stuff. I think it's a good use of a screen, uh, which, you know, maybe just sitting and showing the weather otherwise. So I think that's nice. So the next thing is the devices screen. As, as I said, you can have multiple of these screens. So if I show you the settings again, if you go to devices, now you have device screen one, two, three, and you can configure devices into each of these screens. So you can, you, say, you can move them around uh, and you can move them to the next screen. So maybe if you have like 12 devices, then what you can do is configure four or each of them. And then you can just switch between them by swiping left and right instead of swiping up and down. Again, you would be scrolling the screen anyway. Uh, it is really up to you which one you think it's easier. I mean, maybe what you can do with the screen is you can just uh, group them by, let's say, room or type, like, you know, temperature sensors and light switches and, you know, something else. So that's one thing. And then the same thing works for the scenes as well. So if I go to the scene, now you have a scene screen one, two, three, and then you can just add this, uh, your manual scenes to those. Like, you know, turn on, turn off all the lights, turn on all the lights, party mode, whatever, this kind of stuff. And since I'm talking about this, you can also do some further customization and you go into the settings and personalization and screen settings. So this has changed a lot. So now it shows you the screens that you have configured. And then if you go into settings, you can see here that you can also configure, you know, in which order you want to see. I mean, of course the home screen is default, but then you can just have all the, you know, the, I mean, I have the, all these screens here. Again, if you are not using the device consumption or the thermostat, you can just remove it. So you, you don't have to swipe so much left to right. 
but then you have the device screen 203 and the scene screen 203 as well then you can just move them up and then rearrange them so at least it's you know highly customizable which uh, I like and now we can move on to the consumption screen and this has been added for a while and it has been working but what I mentioned in my previous video is uh, that at the it is not rolling with the current date and that has been fixed so what you can see here is today is the well today is actually the 13th of uh, December and you can see the last one is the 12th of December so this will always show you the consumption of that device for the last seven days not including the current day so it would just refresh at midnight or probably some sometime after midnight again if I come to the settings then the the settings hasn't really changed so you can just configure which device you want to add to here uh, that measures uh, consumption and it looks like that now all the power consumption devices so the POW, POW release 2, most probably release 3 as well which I don't have, the dual and the elite is supported. One thing I haven't tested is what happens if you select multiple um, and to be honest my assumption is that the consumption of each of them just gets added up so you only have one screen that shows consumption so you, you're not going to have multiple consumption screens and um, uh, may, well yeah uh, that's well okay so I haven't tested this I was thinking that maybe you it would swipe up and down and it will show you but uh, you know this also only shows energy it doesn't show you POW so it's really my assumption is that the devices would just get added up and um, I mean yeah you can you can have separate screens on the cast I think so if you really need that you can use that one for that that's pretty much it I mean the only other thing which I mentioned right in the beginning is that you can click on the forecast to get a seven day forecast that's nice so it's basically just the main weather icon and minimum maximum temperatures well it's good enough for me and then it shows you today and then the next seven days using uh, abbreviation maybe they could have fitted the full names of the day it should not have been abbreviated but anyway and um, yeah the UI changed and um, for this and that but the camera thing is is already working and I've uh, mentioned it in the previous video that now I'm getting proper live feed for both of my RTSP cameras and also for the son of camera which I think it's uh, looking at the car in the garage actually no this is another IP camera which is outside and I think yeah the the link for this is broken but if I do I have to do more and it's just called the camera and that's the camera in the garage well that part yeah the Christmas lights are on and uh, yeah I mean because that's this is the son of camera the two-way audio is working as well but you can see that I'm getting a live feed so yeah these are the changes um, I think they are good changes I don't see any changes in the Zigbee so it's most, mostly this UI and that sort of stuff oh one thing which is still not working I'm still not able to change the background picture so that is supported it's uh, included in the uh, in the app but it's just giving me the same error that it's been giving me for I don't know how long time so that would take probably you know the next iteration to get fixed but still I think these are meaningful changes so if you like these definitely upgrade if you don't have an NS panel but this just made you buy one I'm going to include links in the video description but that will be all for today thanks for watching and hopefully see you next video